Yes, folks, as promised, we do have the man himself, a man whose name is synonymous with greatness when it comes to the entertainment industry in Guyana and the West Indian abroad. Of course, I'm referring to Mahadev Shivraj, a man who has done it all from stage to movies, te television, and a host of other things. So Mahadev Shivraj, welcome to the Legends and Icons live stream. How are you doing today? Good, man. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. And thanks, thanks for having me and thanks for everything you've been doing to help me. I really, really appreciate because um, a lot of people don't know about my stuff. And, and when you show the films, I know it's reaching out to a lot of people because I've been getting responses to and I see people responding to your posts. So thank you very much. Absolutely. You are a man of the community. So helping you, it's an honor. And, you know, as you mentioned, it's been a while since we we've seen anything from you and definitely glad to have you back. So a lot of folks are being reintroduced to your work right now and right. kind of reaching out to a whole new generation. So what's been happening with you since your last film? I believe your last film was the, the protection game. Protection game. Yeah. Well, actually I was so disappointed with the outcome of protection game because I had done it to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Indian arrival. I had spoken to a few members of the government ministers and they all promised that they were going to show it for the occasion. And that was at a time when nothing was planned yet for the occasion, you know? Right. And then when I sent the trailer after the movie was done, they're not answering their phones, they're not answering email. I had my friend uh, uh, print the email and take it to them. <laughs> And still no response. And, and I did so much. Here, that thing had such an effect on me. Uh, let me put it this way. It went as far as like, I thought to myself, maybe this is how people feel when they're going to commit suicide. Like, you know, people are closing up all the doors on you. Uh, and it's not a matter of closing doors. It's a matter of closing doors after you made promises. You know what I mean? Right. And it's not like I was asking them for any money or anything. I was just, I was doing something. As a matter of fact, when you look at the trailer, you see that it's dedicated to our guy and his brothers and sisters all over the world. So why wouldn't you want to show it anymore, you know? Right. So after that, I was so despondent. I, I said, you know what? I'm done with Guyana. I didn't even go back to Guyana. And I'm a guy, I'm there two, three times a year, you know? Right. Um, but then when um, uh, in 2018, my, my mother-in-law started ailing and my wife went to... Um, to see her on Mother's Day. And when she came back, she told me, Mahade, everybody in Guyana is waiting for oil, you know? And I thought to myself, you know, these people think that oil will solve all the problems. And my view is totally different, you know? So I right. started researching and then I, um, I spoke to my friend about writing the um, part two of Brown Sugar, which took weeks and weeks of trying to convince him that we should do it. But here we are, finally, after five years, another movie well we're glad to have you back and i i know how hurtful that can be when your own country is closing its doors to you especially for someone like you because you really put your heart into every project you do and yeah you really are a creative person but you know we are happy to happy to air that on our live stream if ever you want that done i'm sure the people would love to see it in the yeah. protection game so mm -hmm. now uh, showing your movies a lot of people have been writing me and their response has been amazing i mean we'll get to brown sugar part two in a little bit but yeah. folks want to see sequels to all of these other movies you've made i mean till i find a place forgotten promise and, and that seems to be the trend in hollywood are, are you do you have any plans for some future sequels or you see the the unfortunate thing is that i am not a writer if i was a writer there would have been a part two of everything that i've done up to now because um i could see a part two you know but um I'm dependent on somebody else, and, and his views are very different to mine when it comes to these things. He, he doesn't like part twos. He thinks one thing and it's over, you know? Right. Uh, it really took convincing to get him to do part two of Wrong Sugar. Forgotten Promise was another one I was telling him, hey, let's do uh, Forgotten Promise, because as soon as that movie was show, everybody wanted to know um, about the part two. As a matter of fact, um, I was reading a message to um, a friend, uh, to, to my wife, from somebody in Guyana. And then the person actually called too. And my, my wife heard because I had them on speaker. And it was about Forgotten Promise. She's like, you're supposed to um, help your son with the pepper sauce business and this. And <laughs> they know mm. everything, right, from the movie. Uh, right. Why, why, why no um, Forgotten Promise 2 up to now, you know? 
Right. But again, he he doesn't feel that, so I can't really do anything, you know. <laughs> uh, that's understandable. Hopefully, hopefully one day we'll see them. There are a lot of a lot of creative folks out there in our community who are watching and listening right now. So, hey, if any of you have an idea and you want to toss it out there at Mahadeo Shivraj, hit him up on Facebook. Yeah. It, I'm I'm open. You see, um, this Brown Sugar is my seventh film, and it's only because I love it that I've come this far. You know, because the the negatives are so much. You know, when you think about all the cinemas closed down in Guyana, no way to showcase the film. Then when you put it on DVD, it's pirated. I, I've right. lost on all six movies I've made up to now. You know, and but I'm thankful to people like you and and Mr. Roshan Khan and a few of the actors who are Nadir Bakas who have given their heart and soul because they understand. Uh, there are others you have to you have to pay people, and I, and and I I always believe in that. But for those who did it without payment, I, I appreciate that so much because they understand. I don't get any payment and I'm doing this 24-7. <laughs> this oh, whole process is not like you sit down from 8 to 4 and I'm going to work on this movie. No, it's like all the time you're, you know. But, exactly. you know, I, I, it's the love for it that's driving me and, and it's the love for it that, that I started doing it in the first place. It, it was a dream of mine, you know. I never dreamt about being rich and famous and all of that um so that's not my goal really my goal is to do what i love to do but i wish that you know more um business people you know will come on board and help to support because like in guyana i went to 10 big companies for protection game they all refused and i mm. tried to show them like you're doing promotion for one show one night a bunch of people are going to come and they, and they finish and it's over. Whereas with my film, every time people put it in, they're going to see your product. Every time, every time. Right. And they can't understand that. And, and it, it, it's, <laughs> it's chilling kind of to, to, to wonder how yeah. these people can't figure that out, you know. But hey, that's the right. reality we're dealing with. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, people have just become so obsessed with all the different Chutney shows. And that's, that's mm -hmm. everybody's primary focus. Yeah. But... I'm hoping this will be a rebirth for the West Indian movie theater and cinema, and uh, hopefully people will reach out to you. Of all the movies you've done and the work you've done, what would you say is your proudest piece of work? Um, you you mean film? Or, uh, film, yeah. Uh, what are you most proud of as um, far as your movies go? I, I can't pinpoint one really because... If I if I do if I'm not proud of what I'm doing, I should really stop. <laughs> so right. I I think I I would say that I am proud of everything I've done. Because I because I've done them with limited resources. Movies take millions of dollars, and I've been doing it with very very small budget with so many things against me. So everyone that I've accomplished is is a is a work of pride for me. Not pride in a in a negative way of being egotistic, but but um, pride in the sense that I consider each one an achievement, knowing that I had very limited resources and so many things against me, and still being able to do it. Because when I look back in retrospect to um, filmmaking in Guyana, nobody ever made a film and then continued to make another one. They made one and they never did again. You know. Like right. Anmul Bandan was made by uh, Bihari, then Songs of Ishurikane by Bechendin, but nobody ever continued. Why? And, and at that time, they had all the cinemas there at their disposal, but they all gave up because it just didn't work, you know? Right. And here it is, I'm doing it in a time when there is so much piracy and all of that, and I haven't given up. So I consider each one um, uh, something to be proud of. But, but, if this might answer your question in some <laughs> manner, if I have a favorite, <laughs> I would say, yes, I do have a favorite. Um, and, and that's a Forgotten Promise. Forgotten Promise is my favorite. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you why, but it's just my favorite. Absolutely. I mean, that was a beautiful piece of work. And I, I actually had the privilege of working with you on Forgotten Promise. And that oh, was yeah, an honor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a great honor so uh, you know that really is a great movie 
Now, if I, immediately after this interview, I'm going to be showing Brown Sugar Too Bitter For Me Part 1 for the viewers out there. So when you did Brown Sugar Too Bitter For Me Part 1, what was the current situation in Guyana at that time? And what motivated that movie? Well, Brown Sugar Part 1 came about from um, a play, actually. My friend Somnath Narain had written Brown Sugar Too Bitter For Me as a play. And our intention was to do it to commemorate the 175th anniversary of Indian arrival to Guyana. But the more I read, the, you know, every time when I'm going to direct a play or a movie, I have to read it over and over, over and over, because the, the playwright or the films, the screenwriter is putting this thing down on paper, but I have to put it into a visual format for the audience, whether it's on stage or film. Of course, there are two different things altogether. But um, when I when I decided when we were talking about doing the stage play, um, the more I read it, the more I felt like if this is going to be for the 175th anniversary of Indian arrival, only a few people are, are going to see it if it went on stage. Those who come to the National Cultural Center are the only people who are going to see this production. Whereas we want Indians to see it all over the world who are Guyanese, you know, and beyond. So right. uh, I, I decided to, um, I spoke to my friend about it, and he had never written a screenplay at that time. So uh, I said, you know what, let me do it then. Um, so I took it and put it into a screen um, play format. And, and that's when a lot of things start happening because I said, okay, now if it's going to be a, a movie, then I got to get songs and all of that because we can't run away from the fact that Indians are in love with their songs and dances. And, and, and even though I don't want to do it, I have to do it because hey, you're satisfying the market in a sense. So um, then I got in touch with Kerry Gajraj and all the, all the other guys at Anand Hansraj to record these songs and stuff like that. And it became bigger than I anticipated. And the beauty about it, you know, forgotten, um, Brown Sugar Too Bitter for me by far is the most um, recognized film. I don't know. For some reason, everybody loved that film more than any other. Or, or they pulled it. I don't know if it's because of the the grassroots nature mm -hmm. of it, you know, it's nostalgic. It, it takes you back, uh, you know, when you used to live in Guyana and the fireside and all these exactly. different things. It's something. Right. Um, so that's how it actually happened. There's so much I could tell you about brown sugar, but I'll leave you to ask the questions and rather than me taking up all the time. Well, I, I really think that's a movie that people can just relate to. I mean, the stories, the the nature of it, the plot, and the situation at that time, the situation today too, people just really are able to relate to it. So they feel like they're watching their own family, their own story on that big screen. Exactly. And it really is a beautiful thing. Because so many people talk about, um, uh, their, oh, my father was like that. You know, my father was a cane cutter. So right. many, uh, let, me, let me share this one thing. Um, when I went to Guyana, after the movie was shown, I think like two years or three years after, um, I don't know if you knew or, or heard that um, a, a cane cutter son topped the country at the University of Guyana. I don't know if you, you're aware no, of that. No, I wasn't aware of that. Okay, it was big news. Uh, we heard the news over here, but um, now that I went back, I, I went to my friend Roshan Khan, and... Um, he was waiting to see him. I see him come out to this guy and everybody was taking picture with the guy and I was wondering who's this guy. And then after the guy left, then he came and he, I asked him who's the guy and then he said, that's the cane cut the sun that topped the University of Guyana. So I was like, oh shucks, I wish I had met the guy. And then he said, no, the guy's coming back just now. So when the guy came back, he saw me, he saw me. <laughs> So he was like, he came over now and he was like, Mr. Chevrant? I said, yeah. He said, oh my God, I'm so happy to meet you because I want to, let me, and now he's telling me, he said, let me tell you this. I bought this movie. Of course, he bought a pirated copy <laughs> in Guyana. He said, I bought this movie and I took it to him and my mother and my father and I sat down and watched this movie. And when the movie was finished, I told them, I said, I'll make this movie into a reality. Now, in the story, you know, my son actually topped the university, right? Um, right. In the movie. 
So uh, it turned out the same way. But that uh, that alone isn't all. In Tain, which in Barbies, there's another University of Guyana there, and another cane cutter son topped there. I don't know his story, but it was a cane cutter son who topped the University of Guyana again wow. that year. So a lot of um, things, you know, uh, and, and let me say one more thing about um, how people are relating to that story. Uh, in the same way, a lot of people are relating to Forgotten Promise. Uh, you were there when the movie opened in Queens, and, and that same day, at least three people came up and said, man, that's my story. That's my story. And, <laughs> and, and why I say these things, is the, make these comments, is because that's uh, something that um, my friend, um, so not, uh, this, the way he goes deep into these things, it, it, it's so real, you know? Like, like sometimes you look at movies, um, you don't want to see it again. Right. But with these movies, people want to see it again and again. You, you check the comments people make. I've seen Brown Sugar a hundred times. I've seen Brown Sugar a thousand times. I've seen um, somebody that was seeing Forgotten Promise the other day, which you said, I'm watching this movie over and over, over and over. You know, oh, yeah. why? Why? Because it's so real, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> and, and that's the beauty about his writing. And I, and I think with Brown Sugar too, I know you're probably going to get it. Uh, it. It's the same kind of um, scenario, you know? Absolutely. Well, you know, the way the world is right now, COVID-19, everybody has, had, has been impacted by this in some shape, form, or manner, whether it's the chutney industry, the movie industry. And uh, that's kind of why there's been somewhat of a delay in the release of Brown Sugar, Too Bitter For Me Part 2. And we are all anxiously awaiting for that. And believe me, I've been getting a lot of emails. I've shown part one one time. And as I said, we're going to show it right after this interview as well. And yeah. people are excited. What can we expect in part two? What's going to happen? Well, um, just like with part one, we wanted to meet, reach people for, um, for this Indian arrival commemoration. Again, we wanted this movie to open it was supposed to open in Guyana for the Indian arrival unfortunately because of the COVID-19 we couldn't do anything um, but you know I always feel everything happens to the best so it's okay but again um, this this movie came about because I felt that um, sugar was going going out and oil was coming in and it's a part of our history that needed to be captured that was the whole idea behind it. But not, not only that, but also because I think a lot of people have the wrong impression about a lot of things. And, and I wanted to have an opinion shared, you know, through my friend, the writer, and then I will take it and put it out there. But I felt that closing the sugar factories and putting 5,000 people out of jobs had a significant effect on the, their lives. Uh, and so I decided to find out um, some stuff. And when I found out, there were, in, there were cane cutters who had committed suicide because they couldn't um, deal with it. They couldn't take care of their families and all of that. That was one thing. Um, and then secondly, um, on my visit for my mother-in-law's funeral, I, 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 I normally go in the minibus because you get all the stories there when everybody's chatting and stuff like right. that. So anyway, I was in this minibus coming down Regent Street going to town and there was another minibus on the opposite side and they stopped. One to put off people here and the other one to put off on this side here. And um, so they're shouting at each other, hey man, better days are coming, better days are coming, the aisle by the aisle, the aisle, you know? And, and, and I thought to myself that, you know, these people, they think oil will solve all the problems, you know? They right. don't understand that there are politicians who are going to be in charge that are very corrupt, you know? And, 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 and I'm not afraid to say that because it's a reality. And, of and, so, and so we will be fortunate if, the, um, if, that, if anything trickles down to the, um, to the small man. The only thing that I saw that was a, a light at the end of the tunnel was because Guyana has a small population. There's a chance that after they enjoy themselves by taking whatever they want, maybe some crumbs will fall. You know? Right. Exactly. However, but the other thing too is that people were not thinking about the effects of um, an oil spill happening and all of that, you know? 
look, up to the um, day before yesterday, 9 billion cubic feet of natural gas has been flared into the atmosphere in Guyana. 9 billion cubic feet. You know what that is? That's How insane, detrimental man. that is to the environment and to the health of the people, not only in Guyana, but around the world, because you, the, Guyana is not, oh, oh it's only going to happen there. It's affecting everywhere. Everything affects everywhere. Of course. So, so people are totally ignorant about these things. You know, they're only seeing dollar sign because of the oil, but they're not seeing all these things. They're not seeing that the fish will die out. They're not seeing that people will stop, can't do this anymore and can't do that anymore. So I wanted to, um, to at least register that part of our history that's taking place now, which the sugar go in and the advent of oil. So it took con two weeks of two hours per night convincing my friend to write it, but he finally did. And um, I'm satisfied. I, I, you know, sometimes how I gauge it, my wife is my big, biggest critic. When people will congratulate me, she will tell me, I didn't really feel that. I didn't really feel that. And I like that. I like that because it makes me um, look deeper into what I'm doing and try to uh, do better. You know, right? Of course. Uh, sometimes I I don't take her on, and sometimes I do. Um, but I I know when she woke up um, the morning when I had the completed film, and I said, "You want to see brown sugar too?" And she was like, uh, "I ain't even eat yet or not." And I was like, "All right, just come in." And she sat down there, and yeah. you, like like I was telling you earlier, the movie is over. Two, it's two and a half hours, um, which is a little bit longer than Forgotten Promise. And right. when the movie was complete, she was like, uh, I said, you know how long that movie is? Two hour and a half. She's like, nah, you lie. I said, yeah. She said, oh man, nothing fly by so fast. So right away, I realized that the movie is good because, and then now she started thinking, oh man, uh, all those scenes with just every scene with your son is so intense. It's so powerful. You know, right. and she started pinpointing, oh, I like that. And then she started laughing because of this part, you know. So I know, I know to myself, and then for my own judgment too, of course, is the audience will determine how good it is or not, right? You could make <laughs> yeah, a good film and people don't like it because of something or the other. But judging from her response and judging from the editor and, um, and the editor's father, who was the guy who filmed um brown sugar the first one um this is definitely i feel this is a better movie than the first one to me it's more it's more intriguing um to me there are powerful real powerful scenes in it you know right that, um, and and it's taking into consideration all this thing about the sugar and about the oil and the effects and the corruption and everything you know i i think it's a good bundle <laughs> Absolutely. You know, what I love about your movies, you're not like just some New Yorker who thinks he knows about Guyana. You go there, you know the situation, you observe everything, you're always in touch with everything that's happening, the current events. So you really have that grasp on the real world in Guyana and you incorporate that into all of your movies. And I know you've done the same for this movie. Now, watching the trailer, I've seen some of the cast members. I know I've seen Roshan Khan in there, a few... Are there some other folks in there who have been in your previous movies as well? Any return characters or? Oh yeah, well there are some characters that are recurring, like Money Lender is recurring, uh, the two sons are recurring, and but let me see. I think um, those are the only ones recurring, and the Pandit, Pandit is recurring, okay. but every other character is brand new, um, and as a lot, lot of characters. Um, that are new in the film, maybe about 16 new characters. Um, I know that I saw Radhika Olart in there as well, no? Or it was... Yeah, well, well, she died in the first one. Um, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So right, right. Um, she couldn't be back in the second one, but right. um, because of how I dealt with certain things, I, I was able to bring her in flashbacks. Okay, okay. Yes, I saw her in the trailer. Okay. I mean, yeah. we're definitely looking forward to this. This is going to be an exciting yeah. movie, and hey, I, I, we're waiting, we're waiting, and we can't wait for the world to return to some normalcy so that <laughs> you can actually release that movie 
And right. in the meantime, we're going to continue running your films and introducing these films to a whole new generation. And I hope you continue doing your thing, Mahadev Shivraj. It's always a pleasure. And uh, again, you. you mentioned you're always happy for sponsorship and advertisers. How can folks go about getting in touch with you for that? Pardon me? How, how for a sponsorship, they... yeah, how can they go about getting in touch with you to discuss that for sponsorship um, or advertising? Well, I have my email, mshivraj at aol.com or my phone number, 917-972-0787. Okay. Or I'm on WhatsApp um, or Facebook, you know. Right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not um, one of the, um, <laughs> like the young folks there into Twitter and all these things. I'm still <laughs> behind, you know. You still use the old phone. <laughs> I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still with AOL. My son laughs me the time. I have AOL, you know. <laughs> no crime in that. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, um, folks listening, you know, movie is coming out. Hopefully when, hopefully soon. We don't have a date, but it is coming out. Right. Right. And uh, we're all looking forward to that. And Mahadev Shivraj, it's always an honor to have you on my program. And we definitely hope you'll be back. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the viewers before we end for today? Well, well I, I would like to say to the audience that um, they can help me individually by, by not waiting. There won't be DVDs anymore. So DVDs are going to be extinct. So that's going to be out. So the movie will be shown, you know, we, we have our normal place. We show it on 175th Street in Jamaica at the school right. where we put up a big screen. It's like the movie, in a, you know, just that it's not a theater. But we got a, in Guyana, they say, when you're a mama, you're going to suck granny, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's exactly what it is. Um, so how people can help is by coming out and support, coming out and seeing the movie. If you've seen the first Brown Sugar or Jasmine for a garden until I find a place, uh, Forgotten Promise, and you think you want to see another, uh, another of my work, come out and see Brown Sugar. Because when you come out and pay to see it, then I'm, I'm I, again, I don't even care if I don't get paid. I just right. want to continue doing what I love doing, which is to just keep making films. That alone is my payment. I'm happy with that. When, when people come and say, hey, I love the movie, and they want to take a picture, or they want an autograph, not that I want to do those things, but when I see that satisfaction that they get, it brings a contentment and a happiness for me, to me. Uh, and so for me, that is great payment. So if people come out and support by coming and see it when it's screened, then at least I can recover some of the costs to go forward. You know, if right. I could say this, I would love, I, I want to make a movie to go beyond Guyana, to go to the film festivals. Um, because I feel that um, after seven movies, I shouldn't focus only on Guyana alone. I should try for something beyond. And everybody has been telling me that. My friends who, like, the Screen Actors Guild friends that I have who work in the mainstream, you know, they keep telling me, why, why, why are you stuck in Guyana? Why don't you make a film to go to the film festivals? Why don't you try to get on Netflix? You know? Right. But, uh, but it's all easy to say, but to do is not easy. It, it requires money. And again, like I said, I do my own with limited resources and all of that, but still, it calls for resources, you know? Yeah. And but, but just to let you know this, and I, I'm throwing it out. Do I have a few minutes to say this now? Oh, take your time. Take your time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so um, we have a film called, uh, a, a script called, actually we have more than one. There is one that's a Guyanese film, but half of it is here and half is in Guyana. Something like Forgotten Promise in a sense. But it's called Return of the Salmon. And uh, Return of the Salmon, you know the story about the salmon, it, after it spawns, it goes upstream where it started right. to die. Uh, yeah. So in the same way, this story is about this guy who goes back home to die. Um, but there's so much that goes on. To me, this is the best script my friend has written up to now. Better than Forgotten Promise, Brown Sugar, and all of that. That is one film I would like to do to go for the festivals as a Guyanese film. But right. aside from that, we have another one called Tangle Dreams, which is based on this Guyanese father, which, which I'll be playing, um, and a son. 
and, and a wife. That's it. But everybody else in the movie are either Italians or Black American or Hispanic or Filipino, like a, like a New York mix, kind of, but, but mostly white. Okay. And, and those two films I really want to do to go to the film festivals. And hopefully, if somebody recognizes it, if it gets noticed somehow or the other, that we could pitch it to Netflix, you know, to get it screened. Absolutely. What will be a prouder moment than having a Guyanese made <laughs> film on Netflix? You know what I'm saying? That so, would be a proud moment for the entire country and exactly. everyone and, abroad. And I wish, I wish I could get some people who would just come, uh, uh, just, just believe in me and, and give, let's, let's give it a shot, you know? Right. Um, I can't do it alone. I really need that that financial backing and again like i said it's not millions of dollars i will make it with small amount of money i will make right. it for a small amount and still make decent quality you know Absolutely. but i know like for example netflix has some um some specifications that you have to follow and one of the first things is like all my movies were except for till i find a place which is very old um, were made with high definition camera because my camera was high definition. I play, at that time when I bought my camera, it was ten thousand dollars, right? Yeah. No, that has become ex it's extinct now almost, right? <laughs> it's great quality is good. You've seen the movies, all the quality is good. But if you're gonna try to get to Netflix, you have to go four K and above. Right. Which means, which means that if I were to want to go to the festivals and try for any of these things, I had not only to come up with um, the the budget to do, but I have to get the new equipment, you know. So, right. But I wish, I wish people here and out there, and um, you know, if you, if a couple of businessmen would just come and you know believe and 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 say, you know, well, let's go. I'll I'll make it with a small amount of money, and I feel that. Um, I feel it could be, it could work, it could happen, you know? I just feel confident that I could make it happen and make a good film. So if anybody can do it, you are the one to make it happen. And I know a lot of folks are watching, a lot of folks are listening, a lot of business owners are out there. Let's work together, let's make this happen. It would be a proud moment, not just for Mahadeo Shivraj, for all of us as a community, as a country. This really needs to happen. And Mahadeo Shivraj, you are the man to represent us. You are the one to make it happen. So. Let's all work together. We can make this happen for sure. Thanks, Jason. And thank you for all your help, man. I really, really appreciate. And I um and, and hopefully something I'll do something where you could be a part of it again and show me your acting skills once more <laughs> like you did in Forgotten Province. Well, I, I definitely had a lot of fun being in Forgotten Province. And I, I could tell, you know, for the folks out there working with Mahadeo Shivraj, he really he was there, you directed that movie and it's such an honor working with you. You really are a perfectionist. Like, you know what you want. You know how you want your actors and actresses to deliver their work. And for me, that was my first time ever being in a, in a film. And it's amazing. It was a wonderful experience. And we can't wait for Brown Sugar, Too Bitter For Me Part 2. That's coming out soon, hopefully. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a wonderful experience. So my dear Shivraj, once again, it truly was an honor to have you here on the program. And we look forward to hearing from you again as we get closer to the release. But until then, as I mentioned, we're going to be showing Brown Sugar Too Bitter For Me Part 1 right now. So folks, stay tuned and enjoy the movie. It is Sunday movie night, as always. And once again, this is the man who makes all the magic happen, Mahadeo Shivraj. So Mahadeo, thank you very much, and we'll be thank in touch. You. Thank you, Jason. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. All right.